In this video, I'm going to explain how to build an irresistible offer for your mentoring or coaching business and do it so well that you'll create an ongoing stream of incoming clients at the right fee. This video about building an irresistible offer is taken from one of our live masterclasses with a group of our business mentors who each paid £7,500 to attend. So hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you're excited to dive into the video and we'll get started straight after this. Okay, so let's talk about irresistible offers. Oh, I tell you what, I mean, I know all these are weak in most businesses, but this is the area where almost every business doesn't do this. They just don't do it. I mean, at least sometimes with headlines, they have a go, or they've used an agency, but they're still rubbish. But with, with the offer, most businesses don't have any offers in their marketing, as you're gonna to see tomorrow when we go through the newspapers and stuff. <laughs> but it's so important. This is, this is the thing that's going to entice people to become a lead or a customer. Yet most businesses don't even do it. So when you do this right, the only outcome is that you will magnetically attract the target market to you, to your client's business. Obviously, it's called irresistible offer, so they're, they're almost impossible to refuse by people who are right now looking to buy or, or interested in more information. So this is, this is a, this, I could give you loads of examples of this, but this is a direct mail letter, believe it or not. So this is a co company called Boodles. They're a prominent jewelers in London. And this is a letter that they sent to me, um, basically asking for me to, to buy from them. But actually it doesn't because it says, for when you're next in the market for jewellery, please can I suggest where you should come. At Boodles, our aim is to create finest British jewellery designed here, made here, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically, their offer is, next time you are near to one of our shops, please do not hesitate to call in. Of course, we'd love to tell you something on the spot, we'd love to sell you something on the spot, but that's not the point. Come in and say hello. We are interested to meet you and build a relationship for the future. Listen, what they, I, I tell you what they've done that's really good. They've, they've identified the target market, okay, um, which has cost them. They've written a letter, put it together, signed, 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 sent it, cost them money. Well, obviously none of the core elements are in this, but the point is there isn't an offer. No. Oh, it's tenuous, isn't it? But my God, you've gone all that time and effort. Give me an offer. Get me to, if you want me to come in, what, how are you, what are you going to do? Even give me 20% off my first purchase, for goodness sake. Do something. Or if I buy X, you'll give me Y. Or what? There's nothing irresistible. So I applaud them for doing it, but they've done it. But, but because these people don't know what they don't know, do they? Now, a softly, softly approach like that might work well with their customer base. But you still need an irresistible offer with your customers. You, by the way, one of the things that you should all do from, from, from Wednesday onwards is start collecting stuff that you get. Okay, and, and it's known as a swipe, pa swipe file, but keep stuff because it'll help you with, with your learning, but also it's good to keep examples of this kind of stuff so you can show people. So it reinforces your knowledge and your skill set, and all, but it's dead easy to do. I mean, you're just collecting stuff that's crap, and most of it is. Okay, so when we're creating irresistible offers, something comes into play that we call lifetime customer value. We touched on this yesterday, didn't we? So can anyone tell me what lifetime customer value is? Yeah, it's the profit from customers over the lifetime of the relationship. Now, the reason why the lifetime customer value is so important is, if you think about it, most business owners, the way they approach their marketing and their acquisition of customers is they think about the first transaction. So how much did we make on the first transaction? They're not thinking, well, how much are we going to make over the lifetime of, of the relationship with the customer? 
So if, if, their, if their mindset is on how much are we making at the front end, rather than how much we make over the duration of the relationship, that really restricts their, the offers that they can create. Because the offer has got to kind of make them money at the front end. And I'm not saying an ir irresistible offer isn't going to make them a lot of money at the front end. I'm just saying the approach is very different. Because if you, if you view it as your relationship with the customer over the lifetime of that relationship, obviously you're going to make a lot more money than on the first transaction. As long as you, you build that in. So it gives us more flexibility to create even more sensational offers by looking at lifetime customer value. It doesn't mean to say we're going to lose money on the, front, on the first sale, but it gives us much more potential. And actually, if we can, figuratively speaking, buy customers um, by creating a, an irresistible offer, it means that you know, we'll steal a massive march on the, on the competition, and you know, it's transformational in itself, just creating an irresistible offer. But, but thinking not just on the first purchase, but lifetime customer value is a, is a mindset change that makes a big difference to how a, a business markets. So we've got, we've, got, we've got what we call lead generation irresistible offers. I call these soft offers. So basically what a soft offer is, it's basically an offer that requires no personal contact between the buyer and the seller. Okay, I'll give you some examples in a minute. You've also got conversion irresistible offers, which are hard offers. So they typically, you either buy it, you're either buying it, so you're making a purchase, or there, there, there is some personal contact between the buyer and the seller. So whether that's by phone, Skype, in, a, in person, whatever it may, may be. Let me just go through lifetime customer value then. So let's say a new customer pays £1,000. Okay. We make £500 on that particular purchase, and the cost of acquisition is £600. Well, what does that mean? We've lost, yeah, we've, we've, we've made a loss of £100 on that first transaction. So if the business owner has the mindset of we've got to make money on the first purchase, what would they naturally think about that particular strategy that they, that they were using? Yeah, Not going to do it again. Yeah, and that's how a lot of people do it, which is crazy. Because, obviously they can <coughs> conclude it's uncomfortable, or is it? So let, let's look at the actual situation. Because of repeat purchases, which we just talked about. So we've talked about lifetime custom values, the profit generated during the lifetime of the relationship with the customer. So, new customer pays £1,000. But they do it every year for five years on average. Gross margin still the same, of course. Cost of acquisition, of course, it's still the same. But actually, we made £1,900 profit. Or we will do over the duration of, that, of the relationship. So it's 1,000 times 5 years times 50% minus the 600 cost of acquisition. Does that make sense? Now you pr pretty much conclude that's, that's a pretty good deal, isn't it? That's a pretty good return on investment. It just enables us to spend more to acquire the customer if we need to. Now, what have you got to be mindful of if you are... Now that's known as a loss leader offer. Yeah? What have you got to be mindful of if, if you're making a loss on the front end? What's really important? That you retain them. Yeah, so we retain them. What, what, what else do you think is going to be important? What, what, what have we got to try and do as soon as possible after that initial transaction? Get them to buy again. Yeah, so what we want to do, because obviously this does affect cash flow, doesn't it? So what we've got to try and do is get them to buy again as quickly as possible so it gets us into profit. I'm going to show you how we do that later on this afternoon. Like I said, just having that mind shift makes a big difference, but we don't have to make a loss on the front end. But if we are, it's still a really, really powerful way of, of buying customers. And because most of the business owners don't get this, you know, your clients are going to be competing against people that just, they won't be doing this sort of stuff. So they'll just win more business hands down. So let's just look at some examples of soft, irresistible offers. So that, as I said, that's where no personal interaction or sale occurs. So things like free special reports, so free brochures, newsletters, free information packs, free coupons, free ebook or free book, free DVD, that sort of stuff. 
these things work really, really well. They've worked for nigh on, well, I don't know how many decades, but a long time, and they still work really well. You can add in there free seminar, free webinar, that sort of stuff, yeah? So these are called lead magnets. Heard that phrase? Yeah? So we call them lead magnets basically because they're magnetic to generate leads. Um, I, don't, I don't ever see these not working. And, and obviously, depending on the client, you know, what one may suit them better than others. But they work as long as they're targeted to who? Target. The target market, yeah. Now, the reason why they work so well is because of this. This is not a law we've made up. Have you, have you all heard of the law of reciprocity? So, right, so... <laughs> I know, that's the thing. You, the law of reciprocity. What it basically is, is when you give something of value to someone for free, what do they feel compelled to do? Give back. That's what the law of reciprocity is. Okay, so if we've given them something of real value for free, they feel compelled to give back. And when they give back, what does that mean? Sales. Sales. They're buying from us, yeah. They feel more compelled to buy from us. Harder is a spluffers, slightly different. This is where a personal interaction or a sale is made. So it could be a free trial. Free trials work really well, by the way. Um, a free no-obligation appointment, free meeting, free consultation, free survey, bundles, and lost leader offers. Now, before I talk about lost leader offers, which we touched on earlier, let's just quickly talk about these situations here. So how many businesses offer free no-obligation meetings or free no-obligation appointments or free consultation? A lot of businesses do that, don't they? Yeah. Now, just because it's free doesn't mean to say it's irresistible, does it? Now, that, this is the misconception of most people. So if you've got a client that offers a free meeting, whatever, however they dress it up, what I'm going to tell you now is transformational. Okay, just in this bit. Because that is, that is an offer, it's just not irresistible. And guess who else is offering that? All the competition, yeah. So how do you think we can make a free meeting or a free consultation irresistible? What do you think we could do? Because on, on its own it isn't. If you think about it, just the free meeting is, is not irresistible. And everyone else is doing it. So what we've got to do, we've got to add value to that meeting. So you know like we talked about with the, the washing machine? And I think Mike said, well, if, if, we've, if we're working for an organization that is selling widgets that other people are selling, how do we then differentiate or make it irresistible? Well, you've got you to add the other stuff to it to make it more compelling. Well, it's exactly the same with the meeting. So if we, so if we, if we you know, give the meeting a title of what we're going to achieve from, from the meeting, so how to X, Y, and Z, and we maybe we bring, we give them some free reports, or by, and by the end of the meeting, you're gonna, you're gonna, whether you go ahead or not, you're gonna have, you're gonna get this, 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 and this. We could maybe add some um, bonuses just for meeting me. We're gonna give you X, Y, and Z, irrespective of what um, decision you make. And ideally, these things we're gonna give are inexpensive to us, but but have value to the prospective customer or, or existing customer. So all we do, we gotta sell it. It's got to sell the meeting, as opposed to saying free meeting. So we've got, to, we've got to persuade them that the time they spend with us is valuable. The best 60 minutes are the best two hours they've ever spent. And we do that by adding the value to the meeting. So all our clients that do this, they will be experts in their field. So we've just got to draw that out and say, right, okay, let, let's, as Ellie rightly said, what do they get out of it? What are they going to get out of it when they meet with us or the, when they meet with your client? It's so easy, this. Just benefit, benefit, benefit. If we can add bonuses, even better. Nobody does this, by the way. So if all we do is this for the client, not that we would, but it's make a massive difference. It's transformational, this. All right, let's talk about lost leaders then. So lost leaders, we think... Um, the concept was created by a guy called Maxwell Sackheim. He created the Book of the Month Club. Um, still, still going strong. Um, it's now owned by Time Warner, but was created in 1926. 
Okay, and Maxwell Sakam, he's on your recommended reading list, by the way. I think it's called Billion Dollar Marketing. Really, really good book. Um, he created the Book of the Month Club. Can you remember? Do you, do you have any idea what the Book of the Month Club or something similar, what the offer is? Yeah. Could be that, but what's the upfront offer? Yeah, so three books for a dollar, three books or five books for whatever it may be. It's like an irresistible, it's obviously irresistible. So this, is, this was their original ads. So your choice of any three books for only a dollar. Now, are they making money on that first transaction? Probably not. But they, that's targeted to who? Who's that targeted to? People that enjoy reading books. If it's mass market appeal, it's, you know, half the people, are, what, 90% of the people can't even read, so that's a bit harsh. Um, but they know, don't they? They know once they take that offer on, a high percentage of people will stay with them. Look, look at this one. This is one I saw in the UK a few years back. So exactly the same thing, different company, of course. But look at this. Three books, three pounds, and absolutely positively. Where do you think they stole that from? Yeah. FedEx. Um, and absolutely positively, no commitment. That's a really good offer, that, isn't it? And, and you get a free document case and bonus books and stuff. So again, they're, they're not making money on that first sale, are they? But they know once people buy from them, they'll know their metrics, they'll know how often they buy, and they'll get them into profit, the organization of profit, a suit, you know, within a month or whatever it may be. It's a good offer. What I'm going to show you now is, is a letter that my wife and I received from the school that our children went to. It's a few years old now, but they went to the, a prep school in Loughborough. And... Um, the school sent us this letter. I've not fabricated it to suit uh, this workshop or um, seminar or whatever. It's exactly the same. I've not changed any words, okay? And they basically sent us this because what, what the school had was they, those of you that have had children will know that there's something called the book club. And this, the book club comes to school once a month and they bring all the books for the kids to buy and the kids day before say to mummy and daddy mummy and daddy book club are coming tomorrow can I have five pounds or ten pounds whatever it is so mum and dad give them the money and um, the kids go to school book club comes at lunchtime and all the kids buy books um, obviously the book club win because they make sales a lot of sales the school win because the book club gives them back a commission based on the sales generated the kids win because they get the books the only people that don't win are the parents because the children usually buy the books and then don't even read them Anyway, so it's a multi hundred, x hundred million pound dollar biz, uh, business, um, and obviously is, is is still running as well now. So the school sent us this letter, okay, around that the book club. So let, let's just read it. So dear parents, change of book club. Baker Books have offered us a special introductory offer of free books to the value of our summer order from their pupil book club catalogues. In other words. If the value of the order is £600, we will receive £600 worth of free books for school. This is too good an offer to refuse, and so we'll be changing to the Baker Book Club. <laughs> I'd be grateful for your support. Now, you can't make this up, can you? Because look who it's from. Yeah, Jenny Reid. Jenny Reid. <laughs> um, there's a few things about this. Like, firstly, would the parents... I don't think the parents even knew who the incumbent book club was anyway. Anyway, I've made a call to the, to the school and just said, look, just out of interest, how long was um, the, uh, the, the previous book club? Uh, 20 years. So that's a pretty strong relationship. Yet, with an irresistible off like this, it's just completely changed. So let's just look at this. Because on the face of it, it looks like it's a lost leader, doesn't it? Yeah. So let's look at it. So what it's saying is, if they order £600 worth of books, they'll get £600 worth of free books. So if the order is £600, what do you think, though, the cost to Baker Books is for that? 150. 150. Yeah. Might be 200. Let's just say, well, let's say 200. It's probably 150. But let's say 200. So that means, the co the, so they're making how much? If it's 200 cost, how much are they making? 400. But they're going to give the school six hundred pounds worth of books. But that's only costing two hundred. That's only costing two hundred. Mm -hmm. 
So they've actually made 200 on the sale. Brilliant. So when you don't have, you know, it doesn't have to be a lost leader offer for it to be an amazingly irresistible offer, does it? That's a genius offer that I bet they won loads of business with that. It's a really, really good offer that. But it's not even a lost leader. And then for every 600 pounds every month thereafter, they're making 400 quid or 450 quid for every 600 pounds, which is very impressive. And that's what you can do when you create an irresistible offer, but it doesn't have to be a lost leader offer. Now, there's, there's, there's a pretty well-known film called The Godfather. Anyone seen it? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask you or your clients to create offers like the one I'm going to share with you. But um, in the first Godfather film, there's a classic scene. Um, in fact, the scene I'm going to show you isn't the classic scene. The one preceding it is, but, or the one after it is. But it's basically um, the Godfather's got a family party and all the family are there and stuff, the family. And um, he's talking to his nephew guy called Johnny Fontaine, and his nephew is an aspiring actor. And he'd been to Hollywood the week, week or two before to, to audition for one of the um, you know, top uh, parts in this, this film, this film who's, which is directed by one of Hollywood's top Hollywood directors. And the Hollywood director um, is so wealthy because of his success, he has a stable full of prized um, racehorses. Anyway, so let me just play this. It's literally a few seconds. Hey, look, Tyra. I want you to eat. I want you to rest well, and a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's going to give you what you want. Too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. So he's been for the audition. He got turned down, and the Godfather's saying, I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Do you know what the offer was? <laughs> His most prized horse... The director, the next day, woke, woke up in bed, and right next to him is the head of his most prized horse, blood pouring out the bottom. It's like one of the classic Hollywood things. Now, obviously, you and your clients aren't going to create offers <laughs> that bad. But the point I'm trying to make is, it's not difficult to create irresistible offers. If we know who the target market is, and then we... <laughs> if you just got that? And then we... <laughs> and then we structure the offer around it. Okay, so how do we make it more irresistible then? So what you what you got to think, what your client's got to think about is, so what can we add to make it even more irresistible? And there's, there's lots of easy things we can do. So we can add bonuses. So when you when you look at the structure of our offers, how we structure our offers, we 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 add bonuses, don't we? You, you've seen how we do that. Always think target market. So remember, the reason why the target market is the most important thing, and the first thing is because once we've identified the target market, everything else dovetails into it, which makes everything else even more successful. The other thing is, which is really important, you've got to create urgency. So remember when Ellie yesterday was taught, reading that email that she got from us about the um, summary, summary document with the webinar, and it said, look, this, is, this isn't going to be up forever. In fact, we're closing it down tomorrow. That's, that's what, why we create urgency. It's amazing how many orders or registrations you get when you put the urgency onto it. So let's have a look how we, how we, how we make up an irresistible offer there. So three elements. We've got desire. Okay, so it's got to, obviously, for it to be irresistible, we've got to create desire, haven't we, in the, in the offer. We've then got to add what we call a stimulator. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. One of the, one of the, greatest um, terms I heard about how to think about the prospect um, was think of your prospect as this massive, overweight man or woman, I mean literally 30, 40 stone, who you've got to get out of their chair to basically either read, watch or whatever it may be. So it it requires huge effort, doesn't it? Yeah. Huge effort. So if, if you, you and your clients are always thinking that that, even though obviously we've, we've got the target market avatar profile, they're not going to look like that, but or, or, unless, you, unless you're in diets and stuff like that. But figuratively speaking, 
think that it's going to take a massive amount of effort for this person to respond. Because it's not easy to get people to respond. You know, how many, how many times do we not respond to things? Well, we do it a lot with a lot of things, don't we? So it's a huge, gigantic task. Well, it's good for you to think like this. That it's a huge, gigantic task to get people to reply. So we've got to, or buy. So we've got to make sure that our offers are scintillating, that they are irresistible, to force this person to take action. Because it's a huge effort. And don't forget, every single prospect or customer we're targeting has got a million of other things around their life that's going on right now. So make no bones about it. We have to be good at this stuff, which is why the core elements are so successful. So the guy that, the guy that uh, talked about this, a guy called Gary Halbert, unfortunately passed away a few years back, but he's, he was a renowned copywriter. And when he said that to me, that you could think of your prospect as this massive, overweight sloth of a person, I thought, God, that's such a great way to think about it, because it forces you then to, to work harder to get the response. So when it comes to stimulators, deadline dates are just amazing. So in that example that, that we're talking about with Ellie yesterday, the, the deadline was like, was it midnight on Sunday or whatever, whatever it was? Yeah. Limited availability. Okay, so one of the things we do on, on our webinars is we say, look, for the first 25 people that, that join, they get this extra bonus. Or there's literally only 25. Once 25 have gone, that's it. No one's getting in. So yeah, we talked about bonuses expiring. Increased price, which is kind of what, what Steve was just talking about. Increased price after a certain date. Extra bonus if you're the first X people, which is kind of the one I was mentioning. So there are, there are actually quite a lot of ways to create urgency because procrastination is, is our worst enemy. <coughs> so we have to use urgency and stimulators, as we call them, to get people to take action now. And we're going to talk a lot about this on Wednesday. Our whole goal with every single marketing piece we produce is to get people to take action now, not tomorrow, now. Obviously, some people will act tomorrow, but our goal is to get people, as many people as possible, to act right now. Then, of course, we've got to communicate the offer. Okay, you'll see that the word communicate comes up a lot, and it's because if we didn't put that as part of the success equation, uh, success formula, that people would forget to do it, clients would forget to do it. As you can see, Building an irresistible offer will enable you to acquire more clients at the right fee. It's also a valuable lesson you can teach to your business clients too. And if you want to use this to build your mentoring business and be part of one of the world's fastest growing industries, unlock your skills, experience and expertise and use it to build a successful mentoring business, you've got to register for my free masterclass training. You can check it out at the link below this video. It's called businessmentoringsystem.com and make sure you register now to grab your seat. During the masterclass, I show you how to quickly acquire a steady stream of 400 pounds, dollars or euros an hour mentoring clients. And if you like this video and you found it helpful, please share it with your friends and colleagues, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell because I post one new video on building a successful mentoring business every week. Also, in the comments section below, let me know what your big takeaway was and if you have a request for a video, please let me know. And finally, remember growing your mentoring business isn't rocket science, but it is a science. I'll see you again next time.